Okay, so we're in the car and we're going to do the install. It should be a pretty simple install. Um, it is plug and play, that's what they say, so let's see how we get on. But also I've done the GAR install in the past and it was pretty easy to be fair. I would suspect most people should be able to do this. Just as a safety precaution, I'd always say turn, turn the battery off. Um, I've got a little switch, so I've switched that off just to be on the safe side. And the first thing that you want to do is actually remove the steering column shroud, which is this bit here. Now I've removed that already, a bit Blue Peter style. For those that know me, they know that I'm quite small uh, and historically I've always hit my my knee when healing towing on track so that's already been removed by me previously uh, but i'm guessing most of you will need to re remove that as part of your install and to do that is really easy as well so um, you generally two bolts uh, one on either side um, just screw bolts phillips screw bolts take those out and then you should be able to kind of pull it pull it out and pull it off the one thing i would say though is be careful when pulling it off. You have two switches, one on either side. One is to kind of change through uh, the different options on the dash, and then the other one is your exhaust solenoid switch. So just be careful because they will be attached to the plastic of the shroud. Now you've got a few options. You could either remove them completely, uh, removing them with from the uh, removing them by unclipping these, or you could keep them on the shroud and just put the shroud somewhere safe. My recommendation is probably remove them from the clips because you're going to want to take that shroud away anyway as you're doing this install. So with that bottom piece done and piece removed, you'll have a little piece here as well. Now that should just literally come off. It's not tied to anything. It's not attached to anything per se. So that bit should completely come off. And then what you have is the main binnacle. That's the only thing then we need to try and remove to then get access to the dash. And I'll just show you quickly how we would do that. Okay, so everything off, we're now going to start kind of dismantling the binnacle, which is basically just pulling it off and then getting access to the actual dash. It doesn't really matter that this is a GAR, it's still pretty much the same with your analog Lotus dash anyway. So first off, what you want to do is a little bit of Velcro and just want to kind of release that a little bit, remove the pressure as it were, the friction I guess, uh, and then you want to just gently prise this off um they're basically little push clips you just want to kind of gently prise them off be careful not to snap them and you're kind of pulling it forward he says All right that's one side let's do the other one there you go okay so there's four and we'll have a look at them now Okay, so you can see historically I've broken that one. Again, just be really careful. You don't want to do that. Um, here, so this is the GAR. Um, maybe it'd be a good idea maybe to do a comparison. Uh, so that's the GAR. And then let's have a look. There's the aim. There's the GAR. There's the aim. Now, a few people have asked, is it the same size screen? And I would say... I would say actually the aim is a slightly larger screen. Can you see that there? So I don't think it's major, but I would say it is larger than the standard GAR. And hopefully you're also seeing, and really you should be seeing it anyway for the price difference, you're seeing a difference in the actual quality there as well. Okay, so uh, let's try and get it installed. Now to get that installed, what we need to do is we need to remove this, uh, remove this from the back. And to do that, there are four screws, four Phillips screws, uh, two on either side. And that's what we need to go and remove, uh, remove now. Uh, and then we'll be able to take this off. Now a little tip, um, as you start to loosen this off on the four screws, you'll start to see that it comes, comes, comes away and you need somewhere to, to rest it. So, my recommendation is uh, get a little bit of a microfiber cloth, um, put it over there, and then that, that becomes a, a bit of a resting point as you take off that final screw. So we'll just remove that one now. Right, so uh, that's that last four screw gone. Let's remove it, and let's see what's behind here. Okay, cool. 
as you can see, the microfiber cloth or any cloth really, you just want to keep it in a uh, keep 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 that front dash from getting scratched. Basically, um, this is quite becomes quite a nice a nice resting place. So as we've said, um, I've got the gar unit, uh, so the it's going to look different when you uh, open up the back of your analog unit. Uh, for those that don't have a gar. Uh, basically, there's two sockets. Uh, this socket it goes to the power uh, for your Wi-Fi connection, uh, so that 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 you wouldn't have on your analog or OEM dash. You would just have the one, and that one socket will go into this uh, this blue unit here. So if you are opening up the analog OEM dash, you'll only have the one, which is this one, and that's the one that actually connects into there anyway so again it's we can start to see that this is plug and play so let's disconnect some of this and get the gar unit out of the dash and start to reinstall the aim okay with the the dash now removed by unplugging this little chap we can now remove it from the plastic frame uh, because we're going to need to use this both for the aim. So basically there's four bolts generally to undo. So we're going to do, undo those now. So with those bolts though now removed, what we can look to do is mount the aim. And the way that we look to do that is using the supplied bolts basically just bolting it up there now what you get in the pack is a, a set of bolts and you get these little uh, nylock washers as well as uh, allen key bolts and uh, stainless kind of washers there the recommendation by aim is that the nylock washers go on first then the mounting then the washer and then the bolt so that's what we're going to do now now the last thing you want to do is actually lose those uh, nylock washers uh, that are underneath there as you're putting all these four bolts on. So my recommendation is uh, gently put all of the four bolts on, uh, line them up with the nylock and then the thread obviously to the dash. And then once they're all ready, use your 3 mil Allen key to bit by bit get them all nice and tight. But at least you know that uh, there's no chance of those nylock washes going missing because in a lotus that would be a bad thing to go and have to find when aim say it's plug and play it literally is plug and play that is literally the only socket that you need to install it clips in lovely the gar it's a if i'm honest it's pain in the uh so and so to actually clip in uh, it's a real tough one to get in on the gar but on the aim it's a perfect oem fit as you can see all my connections are ready I just need to tuck all of the cable in into the back and then I can look towards reinstalling just in the same way that I uh, uninstalled it. So I guess this is why <laughs> no one should let me really work on their car. Um, what was supposed to be a simple dash install and is a simple dash install, I've taken it upon myself to start removing the hole of the dash so that I can start to uh, I guess uh, wire up all of the different sensors that I want to get connected into the aim um, and how I want to try and conceal all of the the wiring as it goes to the dash through the center all the way back to all the stuff that I'm going to get kind of plumbed in and wired what with the smarter cam as well as some of the other sensors um, but once you have got your aim, so first of all, if you're just doing a simple dash install, you don't need to do all this. That is just uh, me. Uh, <laughs> and I guess uh, it's winter, so uh, I get bored in winter, so i kind of taken a few things uh, above and beyond. But anyway, um, once you've got your aim dash all wired up as per the instructions, first what you want to do is get them, get it back reinstalled on those four bolts and if you can see behind there you want to pull the wires up through the back making sure that they're not too tangled or bent 
so that you can start to put the binnacle on. I'm going to leave the binnacle off for the moment because I'm going to take more of the dash out. So there's one little thing that uh, I could do with uh, uh, not reinstalling it at this point. But what you can see is um, I've put power back on the car and you can see the immobilizer light has just started. So all looks positive. So let's give it a go. Let's see if the car starts, I guess. Okay, so that's the load up. That's quite cool. Wow. Okay, so that's the road version. I'm just going to start the car actually. <laughs> okay, so this is the uh, the road setup, I guess. Uh, it's really clear. I mean, the definition is is better than uh, what we had on the car. Uh, the revs definitely rev a lot faster than the GAR. One of the challenges or one of the annoyances I had with the GAR was actually the speed of the revs. Um, it was something that was quite frustrating. Um, the rev speed as it went up and down wasn't as accurate as it seems to be on the AIM. Um, I do have an airbag warning light, so I need to have a think about how I deal with that thinking about it because uh, I don't have a traditional uh, seat setup. I have um, a harness. I didn't have that on my previous dash, so I need to have a think about that. Um, although thinking about it, that isn't the uh, okie dokie. That isn't actually the seatbelt. The seatbelt one's there. That's the airbag one. Uh, I don't have an airbag. So I need to have a think about that. Um, probably get in touch with AIM and figure out what we need to do there. Uh, obviously that needs to get sorted. So, so that's one to go and try and get fixed. Um, let's have a look at playing with some of these buttons and see what happens, I guess. Okay. Right, okay, so that's going through preferences. Reverse camera. Okay, so that's the up and down. What's that one do? Okay, cool. Let's see what this does. I really should uh, read the manual. Okay, that's exit. Let's try again. Right. <laughs> I'm going to read the manual properly before starting to play around with those switches, but hopefully you get a feel of um, the install, hopefully it's helped when you look to install it, but up to now, uh, first look, it looks great, um, also it's quite nice to see that the mileage is already spot on, which is great, so that's all co been configured from AIM Direct before it got shipped, so that works quite nicely. So yeah, um, guys, I hope that this install has helped. As a reminder, you don't need to do all of this. Uh, it is quite a simple install. I'd say budget, to be safe, budget two hours, just in case you have any problems like I did with you know dodgy bolts. But generally, this should be installed within an hour. Uh, it's a pretty simple install. So yeah, enjoy, and uh, I best get on to the rest of this winter project. Thank you, guys. Bye.